Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Lee James, I'm CTO of Rackspace. Um, I'm joined today um, by Tim Hearn, who is the um, Northern Europe's director. Good morning, Tim. I just want to say thank you all for, for joining this webinar. Um, we're going to walk you through this morning um, some of the great benefits of VMware on AWS, um, a little bit about Rackspace, but more importantly, how AWS or VMware on AWS can really just accelerate your, your growth with inside your company today as part of your enablement and transformation that you'll be going on as part of your digital journeys, but then also how we enhance um, your existing teams, your existing VMware teams, to take advantage of the public cloud, almost that stepping stone um, into the public cloud, and ensure the real benefits both from a IT perspective, but then also from a business perspective as well. So before I move on, I've just got a few kind of hygiene things to just cover off. Um, in perfect planning uh, this morning, we've obviously booked this webinar, um, and we're going to walk you through the slides, but in around about 30 minutes, and we decided to put a fire alarm right in the middle of the webinar just to keep you all a bit honest and, and alive and awake. And so in about 30 minutes time, um, what you'll hear is um, some noise and we'll just mute for about 30 seconds and then obviously come back in um, after that. Um, hopefully none of you will drop off during that, that slight interlude um, and I can't guarantee any nice kind of supermarket music at that time either. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, please bear with us during that stage. So I, um, I'm going to walk through um, just a little bit about Rackspace. Um, Tim will also touch on a little bit about VMware as well. Um, we've got some, um, there's a questions, a Q&A um, piece as part of this webinar, so feel free to um, ask any questions. Our aim is to answer those questions at the end. And as many as you want, wide and varied, um, and anything that you hear today in terms of what me and Tim's going to walk through as well. So just in terms of Rackspace, many people know Rackspace. Um, many people know us because of our name. Um, 200,000 customers today, 21 years old, we're now able to drink in America, which is quite useful. Um, given our history of um, growing up in San Antonio, uh, being extremely customer obsessed, um, and providing fanatical support, fanatical experience to many of our 200,000 plus customers today. And we started very much in a managed hosting space, but we've seen ourselves expand um, hugely over those past 21 years, not just into infrastructure as a service, but also platform as a service, managed security, managed applications, and also our professional services as well. Um, our relationship with VMware is, is very wide and very deep. Today we manage over 80,000 um, virtual machines um, across our EMEA business um, on behalf of VMware, one of their largest partners globally, um, and something that we're extremely proud of. I'm really looking forward in the next couple of weeks. Many of you will um, hopefully be attending as well. Um, we've got um, VMworld happening in Barcelona. Um, this will be my 10th year in a row as well um, for VMworld. So I'm, I'm feeling the age, um, but having seen the transformation of what's been coming through, and obviously what we're going to talk about today around VMware and AWS, very successes um, that we've seen as well. As you can see on the screen, um, Rackspace has a, a tagline of being very unbiased around our expertise, um, but also we are quite opinionated and we have expertise across all the leading clouds, not just VMware and AWS and VMware, which we today, but many operate across many countries and with lots of frontline engineers providing that fanatical support. What really makes me very excited is actually everything that you can see on the right of your screen in terms of great places to work. And we've been um, very honoured this year to be um, number 10 on the list of best places to work in the whole of the UK. And actually in large companies, we're actually number four um, best places to work. And that's a real testament to our internal teams that we call Rackers um, in terms of the culture that they provide, but more importantly, um, the customer success that they drive every day. Um, on behalf of all the excellent people that we have working behind the scenes and all the architects um, and engineers that we have too. We have some strategic tenants. We like to meet customers where they are on the journey. And as I've mentioned, we provide that unbiased expertise um, and we provide that fanatical experience. Um, and like I say, over 21 years, we feel that we have some of the best experience in the business. Um, our move into the public cloud happened around about 2015, 2016. Um, and it currently sits as one of our largest revenue lines within inside our business across all of the leading clouds. And I've been really happy to add VMware and AWS to that portfolio as well over the past year as well. 
We like to do a few pictures, and Tim will walk you a few more a little bit later. Um, we wanted to put this picture on because it's, it's been really a journey that we see with many of our customers when we engage today. Um, almost a, a kind of testament to my own personal life in terms of where I want to go and what I want to do on holiday. Um, I like the idea that everything's packaged up um, and delivered. Something gets me there and is a nice experience. Um, almost like when I go to Westfield Shopping Centre and I can go to the cinema, do some shopping, have something to eat. Um, and we see many of the corporate IT journeys like this today. Um, still many companies today are still very packaged, still many, many teams working together, and many different teams that you have to engage with, such as procurement and legal and HR, um, as well as an engineering teams, all trying to deliver that great experience for you. Um, but many of the organisations that we work with today um, also then like to dock at a port every now and again um, and then go off and experience something um, absolutely brand new. Um, but they like to do that with the right team, the right team in place. Some of those people on that boat today could be Rackers, they could also be um, VMware employees and VMware service people as well. But the point here is, is that many different businesses are trying to disrupt in a market where they are being extremely disrupted across many, many different industries. So the ability to go as a team and then be able to break off as a smaller team and have those experiences, but more importantly be able to deliver and get that successful outcome is, is really important um, for when you go ahead on that customer journey. And Rackspace tries to meet those customers wherever you are on that journey, whether you are today currently set on um, the cruise liner or you're actually as part of the, the whitewater rafting um, journey. Now, the idea here is, and what you're seeing on the screen, is what Rackspace has brought forward inside the industry is around something called service box. We understand that many of our customers, irrespective of the journey that they're on today, want to be able to package up little bits of experience, join those together, um, because actually their business might be at different stages. So these service blocks here, no matter where you are, whether you're determining where you are on that cloud journey, or you're optimizing, or you're trying to secure um, your infrastructure as a service or platform as a service offerings today, being able to package those up into little experiences is extremely important. And as you can see from here, one of our customers today, uh, Labara, actually does this in practice. The ability, and, and Tim will talk a little bit later around you know, the flexibility and the scalability of VMware and AWS. The ability to package up services as and when you need those services, not just around the infrastructure as a service or platform as a service, but more importantly, as and when you need cloud operations, organizational transformation, and areas such as cost governance is really important. And one of our customers, Labara today, takes services from us, dials them up and dials them down as and when you need them takes those experiences as and when you need them, but then also takes a full service for us when they want to do a, a big move to a new region um, or they want to launch a brand new product. And then we also then package those up into personas. So imagine now spinning that around and saying, I now have a service block which is based on your company and business performance and your IT performance, but what about then your persona performance? What about your team's performance? And this is one of the personas that we deliver today um, for software development teams, DevOps teams, digital teams, where we have cloud reliability engineering, cloud native security, all wrapped around AI ops running across the VMC environments today and with application monitoring. So when we talk through the offerings today, it's about the organization, it's about the transformation, it's about the platform that we host upon, but then it's also about how do you then link that into um, how your teams are operating today, existing tool sets that you may have such as New Relic, how then do you bring in things like cost governance as well and bring those in at the right time? So the idea here is to drive intimacy, and we'll talk through that. The intimacy, the scalability, and the flexibility has been one of the key parts today of why VMC could be a platform for you moving forward. So what I'd like to do is pass over to Tim at this stage, who's going to take you through a few more slides. Thanks very much, Lee, and uh, good morning, everybody. Um, we'll, we'll start off a little bit with just a little bit about where VMware is in its evolution. In, in fact, we're, we're 21 also, so we were, we were born in 1998, so we're actually oh, wow. the companies are the same same age. So <laughs> just amazing what can happen in a relatively small period, period of time. Indeed, I indeed. I remember Diane and the team as well starting all that journey. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, but if you look at where VMware is now and, and, and the way that it's changing, it, it's really transforming itself as well as providing transformational capability out to our customers. So for those most of the people here, I'm, I would imagine, know VMware in one guise or another, but certainly as a virtual, the virtualization company. Mm -hmm. um, but also, if you look at the way that we are now working, our software spans, compute, cloud, 
network and security and the digital workspace. So if you look at the three main strategies that Pat talks about, and you'll hear about more about this in VMworld, we talk about accelerating our customers' journey to the cloud. We talk about transforming network and security, and we talking about we talk about empowering the digital workspace. And, and incredibly, the last three months, VMware has acquired seven companies in the last three months. All of those are are SaaS based organizations. Now whether they're security based in the cloud or whether they are Kubernetes based in the cloud or otherwise, all of that is really focused around driving our SaaS capability. So if you kind of refer back to your your lovely photos of, of, of your ocean liner, you know, that's kind of analogous really to the way that software has been purchased over the last 20 years, yeah. typically as an enterprise license agreement. You start off at day one, you go through a period of time where you have a set program of work and tr 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 a set program of change. It's fairly predictable along that way, but all of a, an organization's processes, our customers' processes and procedures, procurement, IT processes are all tied or linked along that sort of journey. But now when you look at the digital journey, it's much more like your white water rafting. Okay, so you're starting at a place, you're going in a certain direction, you're not exactly sure how fast you're gonna go, where it's gonna end, but you make sure that you go you, you pick the right platforms, the the rafts in your case. <laughs> yeah. You pick the right it. people, the crew to go in the rafts and you pick the right tools to be able to take with you on that on that particular journey. And that's true for our customers. And, our, and 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 partners, but it's it's also very true within VMware um, that you know we are changing very rapidly. I've been with the organisation nearly five years now. Uh, it's it's internally it's 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 changed dramatically in that time. So so for those of the, in, that are on the webinar, think about VMware maybe in a fresh a fresh view. And, and certainly my view. This is my quotes, not anybody else. It's not Pat's or anybody. So <laughs> that is my view of 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 where the company is going within two years. VMware cloud or SaaS based services from VMware will be the default way that customers will consume our infrastructure. It doesn't mean to say we are not going to continue to do CapEx based, ELA based business. We'll absolutely continue to do that, but customers will have a lot more choice about how to procure VMware capability. So whether that is in a traditional way on premises or whether that's natively through organizations like AWS. Um, Providers manage services through yourself, through yep. companies like yourselves, um, or pu purchasing stuff that's running native Kubernetes in in in, in a in a public cloud. You know, all of those capabilities are things that VMware is investing heavily in right now. So, you know, a, a, a big a big change a, a big change for us uh, to be able to address what's going on in the market. And, and if you look at the way that <clears throat> IT capability is is being deployed now. It, it is. It is has changed dramatically. Much faster. Much more agile. Much more small bite-sized chunks. Yeah. A mixture of on-prem and, and cloud. They have to work together. They have to integrate together. Um, it's very difficult to go all in or all out. Um, you have to be able to tie those things together. But if you look at the way that VMware has presented its strategy over the last five years, Pat's been very Pat Gelsing as past CEO has been very consistent in that we talk about um, any app. So we support any type of application, virtualized containers, yep. for example. Um, we support any cloud. We're going to be talking about VMware Cloud on AWS specifically here, but we're relatively agnostic. We have preferences, but we're agnostic to cloud. Um, and we support any device. And in the data center world, that means that we don't really, we don't care what type of underlying hardware there is, whether that's bare metal in a cloud environment or whether that's traditional technology or hyper-converged technology sitting sitting um, on-prem. Mm. So so we, we maintain, that, maintain that consistency. But if you look at what's going on in a, in a multi-cloud world, you know, it's, it's really marked by diversity. So from a data center point of view, you can put the infrastructure in multiple different places. There's, it, there's a big VM-based world, but there's also a huge container-based world. So from a VMware point of view and a solutions point of view, you know, we should be agnostic to that too. In native cloud services, some of the main drivers now um, coming out of particularly the work that we're doing with AWS is around machine learning, AI, and data, but they have to have the capability to interface into existing applications that the companies are running. Mm. And therefore, in the cloud, from an operational point of view, companies are trying to be able to manage infrastructure that might sit in the cloud, might sit 
um, in on premise, but also you're trying to manage the full stack as well as managing the infrastructure as a service. And I really like that, Tim. I think you, you know, we. It's, it's quite easy sometimes when you look at multi-cloud strategies. There's always an assumption that that multi-cloud strategy is very, very public cloud heavy, um, and we'll talk a great deal about that today. But the one way that you really touched on on one of your previous slides was around consistency. Mm -hmm. Do you know, if we if we take that the analogy even further around the the cruise liner and then the the whitewater rafting, um, many companies operate in those two modes and have to. You know, because there is a you know, business still runs today. It yep. still has many, many customers today, but it's still trying to disrupt and look to new markets. But many of the internal systems, how it operates, how it connects, how it talks internally have to be understood. Yes. And some of the transfer, if you move simply straight from an on-prem into a public cloud, people forget that it isn't just about the, the applications that move, it's about the integration, it's about the training, the organizational structure. So the ability to bridge the two, but then join those two up together, really helps you kind of drive that consistency. Yeah, indeed. And, and if you go back to the, the beginnings of the relationship between VMware and AWS, which we'll, we'll come to probably just after the, alarm, the fire alarm, <laughs> um, it's driven by um, uh, mutual interest to be able to provide value on both sides. Yeah. So, so, so Andy Jassy wants the VMware relationship because he wants to be able to integrate his native services into VMware that are currently sitting on prem. Yep. You don't need to sit on prem, but currently most of most most of them do. VMware wants the relationship with AWS because we want to be able to integrate the VMware workloads that we currently have within our customers to all of that hundred and eighty odd services that a that AWS currently offer, of which you know four or five of them are infrastructure. All of the others are around machine learning, AI, you know, real business, you know, business value based digital apps where you should be able to interface the two. Um, and that's really where, where VMware is coming from now with cloud strategy in that it's about interfacing um, workloads into new capabilities rather than necessarily having to completely re-architect existing environments to be able to take advantage of that. And that's a really good point. I think we see many of our customers, um, some are on a great journey of re-architecting their application or building their brand new application in some areas such as public cloud. But many customers also, it's not just about lift and shift. You know, some of the benefits that you may get from public cloud, you may leave some of those benefits behind by simply just doing a lift and shift. It's about making sure you pick the right requirement um, for the need that you have from your business. And that actually may be in some cases very much an on-prem, but the ability then to burst, but again, have that consistency is really key. Yeah, absolutely. And if you if you look at VMware's focus around the opportunities to to interface, add value to uh, in, a, in a cloud world, we have a number of organizations, you know, primarily people like Rackspace, who have built their managed services and their, and their cloud capabilities around a VMware, VMware stack for good architectural reasons and good relationship reasons. And then you have the hypercloud to be showing showing here with Azure, AWS, and Google. Though there's, there's 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 others as well, and most customers will want to use more than one cloud. You know, if you if you're going to all in, there's there's there's, there's risk associated with all in. There's a practical reasons why you might not want to go all in. Yep. So people are going to choose multiple clouds. And there's, there's, in most cases, going to be a need to be able to retain some on-prem capability. And, ha and the biggest challenge that most customers that we find have, this is a migration story rather than a native, build a native app story, which is different. But when, you're, when you are trying to migrate to the cloud, take advantage of the cloud, um, then it's about interfacing, it's about integration. Um, as opposed to you know, your migration and refactoring, et cetera, which 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 we'll come to in just a just a minute. Excellent. Um, and 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 this this slide here is we're kind of talking about um, existing applications versus modern modern apps. And typically, the discussion around existing apps is: Do you maintain it as is, or you maintain it on prem? Do you re-platform it, which means hyper converged, typically? Um, to be able to get more performance out of that on-prem, or do you extend your on-prem environment into 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 the cloud? VMware Cloud on AWS is around this hybrid apps thing, which we'll which we'll come to. 
in a, in a modern apps environment, so you're, if you're building a digital app from scratch, typically you'll you'll put that into build that into native into native cloud. But typically, the thought processes within customers to date has been right. If I'm going to um, interface or make my existing applications work in a digital world, I have to refactor that, fundamentally change the underlying infrastructure of that into that public cloud architecture to be able to make that work. And historically, that has been true. Isn't true today because you can now take that infrastructure as is that sits in on-prem and move that, lift and shift that into public cloud environment and then integrate that into digital services. And certainly what we've found, in fact, some of the feedback, you'll see the slide in the uh, slide in a minute around from AWS as well, is that refactoring is probably the most costly, most time consuming, least value added process of moving to cloud or taking advantage of cloud services. And therefore, if there's a smarter, quicker, easier way to do it, and then take advantage of, of the cloud capabilities, then that has to be something that, that needs to be thought about. Yeah, 100% agree. And I think we, we touched on it earlier as well around kind of tacit knowledge. You know, the, the ability to completely understand what you have today, the ability then to refactor that and then actually put that into a modern cloud environment is very costly. And sometimes that knowledge just doesn't exist. Yeah. So the ability for you to be able to bridge take that step in stone, both organizationally, technically, then also from a cost-effective perspective, allows you to kind of take that small steps. And sometimes it's always viewed upon as being such a big move, but it's such a transformation that needs to go through, not just the application layer, but as I mentioned, that the people and the process layer as well. Yes, indeed. And, and therefore, from a VMware point of view, what we're trying to do is to be agnostic to the cloud, to be able to provide portability between cloud, interoperability between cloud, management layer to be able to manage across across clouds without being locked into any one cloud provider. And that's a very easy thing to say, a much more difficult thing to achieve. But if you look at the investments that we've been making um, uh, with 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 um, with things like cloud health and those sorts of those sorts of acquisitions to be able to help with that journey and our partnerships with people like AWS, you know, it goes a long way to be able to show how that's achievable. Agreed. And, and, and we'll show some examples of that when we go through the slide. The one thing I did want to get um, highlight this is this looks a bit architectural and a bit a bit detailed, but but it's like my career to be honest with you, Tim. I think yeah, very much. Um, which what, what's the start date? <laughs> which, 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 um, no, no, maybe we should. Um, <laughs> Two thousand and two, I think it was on V one. But there we go. Yeah, yeah. Just a mere baby. Um, <laughs> so so what we what we what we're basically showing here is kind of the evolution of a VMware architecture, and and most people today kind of look at VMware in this, in this V2 space, because we talk a lot about software-defined data center. So mm -hmm. a software-defined data center is on-prem. Um, it's underpinned by vSphere. It uses NSX for security. It uses vSAN for storage. It uses vRealize to manage that, that environment. But from our point of view, we've moved on from that. Um, so this is kind of last year's news, if you, if you like. But what we have done is this now forms the basis of what we call um, um, of v VCF. So, so uh, cloud, found, uh, cloud foundation, and what we, what we are, what we're able to do is to be able to take that as a, as, a, as an architecture and to be able to use that across clouds. So, what we're talking about here is, you know, you can use um, a VCF reference architecture. We've just published a bunch of reference architectures for AWS and for other platforms that can be in a customer's own data center, can be in a hosted environment. It can be sitting in an AWS world, it can be sitting in an Azure world, it could be sitting in an IBM world or a Google world. So basically you've got consistency of architecture that sits across these clouds that then integrates into each of these clouds to take the best of what those clouds can offer. Um, and, and there's a lot more detail behind um, what PCF's all about and how we make this work in these in these sorts of areas which um, which we can pick up with people if, if, they're, if they're interested. We do a huge amount of um, work, especially in our professional services area, Area with our customers um, on, your pre on your previous slide around the, the Cloud Foundation. Do you know, the, the move into VMware and AWS opens up such a huge opportunity of AWS options. Um, so many of our professional services, our architects, um, actually engage with many of our customers to, to help them understand. You know, again, like we've mentioned, that, that stepping stone in 
provide you with all that benefit of the VMware world. Mm -hmm. you know, so you can, you can bring along your knowledge of how VMware works, Cloud Foundation works, bring that into AWS. But then how do I take those AWS services which are right for my business? How do I architect those? How do I understand those? How do I integrate those? So many of our professional services teams, and we're starting to do a, a little bit of early work, because I know uh, VMware and Azure, which we'll, we'll talk about in a later webinar, um, has just come to market, and obviously mm -hmm. Google is, is, is fast approaching as well. So that multi-cloud world that you touch about, and the advice and the guidance, and then being able to, in essence, hand off some of those management responsibilities, really kind of enables you then to get on with taking the benefits of both, that, that great, fantastic on-prem environment, what you know today, but then also the public cloud too. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit um, in more detail about VMware Cloud on, on, on AWS specifically. And, and yeah, this is a fantastically strong relationship. It's owned by Andy Jassy and, and Pat Gelsinger, so the, 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 C, the CEOs of the two organizations. There are resources that are dedicated to this in both organizations that's growing rapidly. I personally think I would say this because it's my, my role, but I'm, I'm doing this job because I actually does do think it's the most exciting place to be within VMware right now. Um, and the relationship actually is fantastic. And it's, and it's, quite a, it's a relationship that's been going on for quite a while now. So before we launched the first VMware Cloud on AWS globally, we had worked together at an architectural level to be able to build this platform from the ground up for 18 months or so before we went live in the, in the US. Um, and therefore, this is, a, this is a platform that's been built by architects to be a robust um, infrastructure that can be rolled out globally, uses VMware software sitting in an AWS data center, um, and, um, and, and it's really there to be able to show how you can integrate VMware technology and AWS technology to be able to address customers' need to drive more agile and more dynamic business through integration into cloud. Um, and it's moving r very, very rapidly um, lots of really good customers using it now have experienced the value of it and have extended that integration out. We're doing lots of work with AWS now to be able to start to integrate VMware specific services into more AWS native services as yeah. well, and that's and that's and that's progressing that's progressing very well. Um, but let's go through some of the some of the some of the detail. Um, and, and the reason why this relationship really came has come about from both sides as a mutually benefit or beneficial uh, relationship um, is that to be able to help customers migrate to cloud. Um, refactoring is hard, we've already mentioned, um, and, and AWS find that process hard with their customers as well. And, and, and with, with us and AWS trying to be able to accelerate the time to benefit for customers using digital services, this, this, process, this slows the, the whole thing down. Yeah. So, so anything that we can do to be able to help customers to be able to um, migrate, take advantage, develop, create new capability for them for themselves is a, is a good thing for us and typically when we talk to organizations that they're, they're quite often doing them all of these or a multitude of, of these things so they're either retaining horrible old clunky applications that will never find this way to cloud um, and at some point they retire it because they're developing a new capability in the cloud digitally over here on the right hand side they're looking to re-platform on-premise equipment to be able to get more horsepower capability, more bang for their buck out of what they're retaining on-prem. They're extending or wanting to extend into the cloud and looking for ways to be able to do that. Some of their infrastructure uh, may well justify refactoring into native AWS because of the strategic impact they'll have down the line. Everybody's developing new apps in the cloud and a number of people are just saying, okay, I'm not going to do that, I'll buy SaaS services off the shelf. Yeah. And, and most large enterprises are doing a multitude of these, of these things. The key thing here is to be able to look at applications and workloads and make the right decision for the right application and the right workloads, rather than just kind of saying, right, I'm all in on one route or all in on another. The reality is you've got a multitude of a multitude of both. Yeah, we have many customers today that work in regulatory environments and, and that obviously have large VMware estates today. Mm -hmm. um, and what's 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 really interesting in having run large VMware estates in regulatory environments at my time at BP, and um, we have to be very, very conscious um, of the fact that the integration, the regulatory controls, the governance that we have to put in place, the integration to service management ITIL processes, 
So we'd built up that knowledge. Mm -hmm. The ability then to move that into the cloud, but then take advantage of, say, AWS services, whether that's AI, ML services, whether that's serverless services, they still have to come under that process and governance panel. Correct. So that then again enables us as part of this journey is to understand what that looks like as you move through. Because the transformation isn't just a technology one. Yeah. Right, hopefully you've got your ears back after <laughs> after that fanfare. Um, so, so carry on from what you were saying. Lee. Yeah, and, and 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 these things here shown here are, are some of the challenges we get here about consistent consistently when we're talking to organisations about you know, how are they planning to move to cloud, how are they moving to cloud, what experience have they had to date, you know, positively, and negatively, and and what they're what they're most conscious about is being able to provide consistency of operations. I don't want to have to re reinvent all of my operational processes in the cloud when I've got a whole, when I've got working processes at the moment. I want to be able to extend those. Yeah, and if I if you if you want to extend, um, I'd like to do that on the time. Which I'm, I'm shadow IT and straight into public cloud can cause such a shock. Yep. But it's 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 all the teams that you need to have around. You mentioned it right at the beginning around the, the cruise liner. It could be it's not just operations teams, governance teams. It's also HR, legal teams, third parties, Absolutely. for example. Absolutely. And, and and the other part of it, you rightly mentioned around um, compliance and, and and regulation. A lot of customers have built up a very robust um, security policy around their on-prem environments, and they don't want to necessarily have to fundamentally change that. Security policies is a is a is a is a challenging thing to be able to re-architect and 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 transform. So if you can extend that into the cloud, um, using the same policy, the same processes, maybe with a bit of tweak, um, then that's a lot easier to do. And we've spent a lot of time trying to make that easy for customers through the work that we've done through our compliance and some of the documentation that, uh, and support that we've we've provided. So you know, customers want operational consistency. They want to be able to use the skill set that they've already got and built so they don't want to have to go back through a major retraining exercise or customers having to hire lots of new skills in to be able to move to cloud. Um, they want to be able to um, control and manage secure in the way that they're doing at the moment. They don't want to have an impact on their SLA and they want to be able to make sure that they have compatibility with apps. So that is both digital applications that's being developed in the cloud and um, existing applications, business critical applications that are sitting on prem. Okay, so you shouldn't have to treat them that that differently. Great, um, and that's where um, that's that's where this this comes in. Oops, flipped oh, into two two slides. <laughs> there you go. So this is this is a slide, a very wordy slide. I'm not going to spend a lot of time oh, on it. Um, but this is written by this is done by a guy called John Enoch, who's, a, who's an AWS um, consultant. Um, and what he talks about is um, to when you are uh, refactoring, so there's a particular refactoring discussion if you like here. Um, if you are refactoring, you have to go through a period of time to get to your benefit realization. Um, and provided that you spend time figuring that out beforehand, that might be a period of time and a cost that you're willing to take. Yeah. But what we too do find with most organizations is is that you underestimate the amount of time and you underestimate the amount of cost and resources need to be able to make that process. So what John is saying here is that it, with the purple purple bump is that as you go through that period it takes a while to get to a stage where your your operating cost eventually you know is less. Now John and I argue the whole time about whether the green line or the purple line should be top or bottom. But obviously this is an AWS slide. He's allowed to show that AWS is, has a lower operating cost. The, the, what I've added to this is the dotted line because actually what we do find is when you go when customers are going through an all-in refactoring into 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 cloud, what tends to happen is at the beginning you hit some low-hanging fruit applications and tool sets that are quite digital in nature. You can get them onto the platform quite quickly. Everything goes well and everybody's happy, and then you start eating into the harder, gnarlier, more security-conscious, more robust 
um, applications and, and, and databases and tool sets. And what tends to happen is then the migration slows down, you need more resources, you miss time, you miss deadlines to be able to get it done, you lose support within the business for what you're trying to do, questions are asked, it all becomes a lot very problematic. So so what John is talking about here is we can we can bypass that. So if we've got applications that clearly make sense to refactor into do that. A lift and shift into VMware Cloud on AWS to give you proximity to native, native AWS services is as impactful as refactoring, but takes a, huge, a, a, a lot less time, is a lot easier, a lot less risky as well. So this is this is um, this is AWS's slide trying to talk to talk that through. So we talk a bit about the easy, the easy button um, <clears throat> because from our point of view, if you're a VMware customer, you have an AWS relationship and you're, and you're wanting to develop that relationship with AWS to be able to create innovation, but you are a, a, a strong VMware shop <clears throat> um, and you don't want to throw every, every, everything, everything out the door, then going to VMware Cloud on AWS is the fastest, easiest. Um, lowest risk way to be able to start taking advantage of of of, of, of the cloud and the integration into a, into AWS, and we'll show why that is in 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 just a second. And if you look back at the the, the premise of VMware, and you know, obviously the move you you, you had on your previous slides, Tim, around version one to version two, actually one of the the fundamental premises right at the beginning of VMware was around the the centralized management of being able to broker. IT, no matter where it's hosted Correct. or how it's hosted. Absolutely. But but actually, what was one of the fundamental pieces, especially around the virtual center, and then as we came forward into the integration and then into the network and into the storage area, is that actually um, people forget that your when you've built up a, a wonderful VMware estate, which is providing in essence infrastructure as service and on demand internally, VMware and AWS, and obviously in the future into into Azure and into Google. It allows you to bring the whole organisation with you. Do you know, this isn't just about the technology migration. Now, the application migration is everybody. Mm -hmm. It's all the application teams. It's the governance. It's security teams. I'll keep going on about it, but I think the, you know, it, this is an easy button for, for to bring your organisation into the public cloud yes. and then take advantage of all those services with the control and still then provide that that kind of brokerage that we always talk about and that, that kind of that panacea that we want to get It's to. quite interesting. We have, we have a customer who's, who's currently using VMware Cloud on AWS, but they have a big a, um, a, a AWS native um, shop as well. And one of the challenges that he had was that with, with Shadow IT, so you had the, the DevOps teams that were developing in, in AWS and the corporate IT teams never spoke, never talked, didn't collaborate. But actually, by moving VMware Cloud on AWS into uh, so from on-prem into VMware Cloud on AWS, what they've been able to do now is, for the first time, bring the two teams together, and now they're starting to work on integration projects because actually adds value to both to, to both to both teams. So the CIO was was is very happy that actually this isn't just a technological solution; it's actually helping him to make to create an organisational solution as well. So he's able to leverage all of the digital skills of the organization not having a couple of silos that are not taking advantage of each other's skills. Yeah, we remember. I mean, it's one of the hardest things ever is not just about the technology enablement, it's integration into things like ServiceNow, Remedy Systems, CMDB Systems, mm -hmm. you know, the ability to, to join those two up and bring those in, yep. provide that security, governance and control. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's talk, just, just in the interest of, um, of time, let's, let's talk a bit about actually from an architectural point, what does VMware Cloud on AWS look like? So VMware Cloud on AWS is a, a VMware software stack sitting in AWS's data center, sitting on their bare metal infrastructure, connected to via AWS Direct Connect, and it provides all the capabilities that you would get as the vCloud Foundation, but sitting in AWS's data center. You can purchase it on demand by the by the app metered by the hour. Yep. Um, so it can be capex, can be opex, um, and it extends your on-prem environment. So we've got customers that have done a lift and shift from their on-prem data center into VMware Cloud on AWS because they want to be data center free. Uh, they don't want any on-prem infrastructure. We've got customers that have moved specific applications and workloads into VMware Cloud on AWS to extend their on-prem environment because they wanted to integrate into into AWS into AWS services. Um, and so, customers 
they enjoy in an on-prem environment, but sitting in AWS's cloud, and because there is, you see these, these, um, these arrows here, provides a, a free bandwidth, there's no ingress, egress in this, in this connection between VMware Cloud and AWS and native AWS services, provides a free access to be able to integrate your VMware world into all these AWS native services. So the primary reason why we would say a customer should go to VMware Cloud on AWS is if they're a big VMware shop that's got a growing AWS uh, presence and capability where they're innovating and, and, and developing in, in native AWS, but you want to get that integration and you want to move fast, this is a fantastic solution. Now, this is a VMware marketing slide, which means on the left-hand <laughs> side, it's got everything. It's got VCF on the left-hand side on-prem as well. Yep. That's not necessarily the case. So so if, if an organization has just got VCF 5.5 and nothing else, no NSX, no vSAN, whatever, you can migrate that world into VMware Cloud on AWS. And that migration process gives you a full VCF stack. Yeah. So effectively gives you a full upgrade um, by making that transition into in, into cloud, and then you get all the integration services, and then people like Rackspace can provide a managed service around that to be able to help customers, whether that's managing the environment or taking advantage of additional services and integrating, etc. And, and that's what many of our customers ask today. So on this slide, for example, where does Rackspace come in? And the, the key bit for us is around our we call it Rackspace Private Cloud or the VMware offering today. Um, we actually take away all that mon management and monitoring, um, all the kind of admin tasks behind the scenes, kind of keeping it um, up to date, keeping the lights on, yep. making sure that the latest capabilities are available to you. That's what we provide today. We give all the tool into your hands. So sometimes we see many of our teams come to our customers engage with around Rackspace. I think actually you're taking away the full management away from us. Now actually what we're taking away from you is just the day-to-day. -day. There is the VMware automation, there's the the realized operations that we have, you know, the ability to leverage all the NSX tools and the automation and the service catalog elements of that, we actually give those tools back in your hands. Yep. Let us get on with the management of it to free you up to take advantage of these for your business And this is one of the brilliant things about VMware Cloud on AWS, it gives the customer so much ability to be able to control what workloads are moving on-prem, off-prem, um, what you're spinning up, what you're spinning down, you, know, you press a button 12 minutes later, you can have a new note. So there's a lot of good things. The thing to bear in mind on here, VMware Cloud On is, is a particular brand um, for, for, for VMware, and, and when you see VMware Cloud On something, it means that VMware have engineered it, co-engineered it in the case of here with AWS, um, so we, we're underwriting it, you know, we're billing it to you if you're providing a managed, managed service, um, and, and we are selling it. Okay, So this is a VMware owned and operated service that we that we that we work with our partners on. Correct. If you see any other service around other cloud providers, that's not necessarily the same. So just just kind of bear that in mind that yeah we've engineered from the ground up with AWS. We've got AWS engineers on our site, our people on AWS's site engine you know, making sure that this is an absolutely robust and and uh, an architected and underwritten solution. Um, so this slide's kind of a just an ex extension of the previous one really just to be able to show some of the types of services that we can, that we would interface into AWS. But actually, what we tend to find is once our customers are using a service, they think about another a whole load of other uses and, and, and integration. So things like using S3 buckets for doing doing backup and restore during working hours um, with, with, with no egress cost is a great thing to be able to do. Um, extending um, into into EBS, EBS isn't shown here, but elastic block storage, being able to have a, um, a vSAN environment in a VMware world and then extend into elastic block storage in AWS to be able to add more storage capability dynamically are things that you can really only do practically if you're using VMware Cloud on AWS. It would be much more difficult to do that if you were if you were running that, that on-prem. And we, need, we have partners here to be able to help with skills that are both in the... Um, in the AWS world and the VMware world to be able to help to provide that integration. These are just some snapshots that we got from our ops um, team that actually show how quick it is to be able to build this in infrastructure. So if you're building a new 
um, SDDC environment on bare metal in, in, in VMware Cloud on AWS. This is four nodes, so this will be 100 to 150 VM capability. Yep. That's standard. We'll do that in 65 minutes. So when, so when we go and do enablement, and when you've done enablement with, with, with customers, we typically have an enablement meeting. We'll talk through project plan, and while we're doing that, we'll stand up the environment. By the time we've gone through that project plan, it's there waiting for them to be able to get it done. If a customer, or if you want to add another host, um, which is a fixed amount of dedicated amount of bare metal uh, with a certain amount of CPU memory and storage. You press a button to be able to add another host and in 12 minutes you get that host. And, and if you want to spin that down again, you can spin that down straight away as well. So true on-demand um, VMware, uh, VMware environment and moving really, really rapidly. Um, just on use cases, do you want to pick up on some of the, a uh, couple of the use cases here. So. Um, let's let's look at A and B first because they're the, probably the most impactful. So, um, customers who want to be able to move a specific application closer to AWS because they have some integration work that they want to be able to do. Um, so, Stagecoach is an example of a customer that had an application. AWS came to us and said they wanted to be able to help to do that uh, that integration, and um, and we moved we moved that in three weeks. Um, we've got customers that wanted to move out of an on-prem data center mm -hmm. um, and wholly move into cloud. And w because of the tools that we've got, you, know, you can move hundreds of VMs over a weekend. You know, and you've been doing some of this, some of this stuff as well. And then the other, the other primary use case around cloud migration is, is if you've got a major on-prem hardware refresh coming up, so you are going to have to spend a load of capex on new servers and storage and networking, et cetera, et cetera, have a thought about whether you can achieve exactly the same by avoiding that hardware spend and running your VMware world in VMware Cloud on AWS. Um, and because obviously when you're running on VMware Cloud on AWS, all of that hardware infrastructure is delivered as part of that nodal cost. So you know, we were talking about cost a little bit uh, earlier, well, earlier on. Yeah, when you think about the cost of VMC, you've got to think about the fact that you have no you have no server costs, you have no storage costs, you have no internal network costs, you have direct connecting to AWS that you would have with AWS services as well. Um, and you have the full VMware stack that's managed. Yeah. Right. So try so so it's important to kind of think about apples to apples. And I think a couple of extra pieces on there, I've mentioned it a number of times across the webinar is, is trial and test. Yeah. The ability for you to just take what you have today and then test that into the public cloud, see whether it's sufficient, help you bring along your organization on that journey. And we see many of our customers, especially in the DR space as well, being able to say, actually, do you know, am I getting best use out of my DR data center? or potentially leases are coming forward. Mm -hmm. So actually, how can I extend what I have today using the VMware tools, but actually moving that into the public cloud um, without a huge amount of um, re-implementation, refactoring, et cetera, um, but actually do it at a cost where I can have that quiet for a period of time and then just fire that up as and when we need yes. it from a DR position. No, absolutely. And just to finish on the infrastructure thing that ties into other, we, we, we have a, a customer that is growing rapidly. Um, they're in the mobile, the mobile space. Um, they can enough hard um, and therefore being able to extend that and not have to keep buying hardware, extending that into VMware Cloud on AWS was a great thing for them and they've been able to completely grow as they've needed just by spinning up more VMware Cloud on AWS in, um, and they're now using that for DR. They've just moved the, the Oracle rack over onto that system as well and they're now looking at integrating more into, into AWS. So the really creative ways, this isn't just about an alternative way of hosting. There are cheaper ways of doing better hosting. The reasons why you would want to go VMware Cloud on AWS is you want to be able to get the proximity between your VMware world and your AWS world so you can innovate and be creative. Correct. Um, this is just some quick examples. I won't, bear, I won't dwell on them, but just to be able to show that these things happen really fast. And in all three of these cases, our customers did that themselves. This, uh, so, so the ability for customers to be able to move workloads, migrate workloads from on-prem into cloud, um, and to be able to do that at scale. Um, and this is, these are all business critical workloads. This is, this is not non-operational workloads. To the customer's ability to do this is fantastic. Um, just a quick on pricing, obviously this is straightforward pricing from a managed services point of view. 
um, Lee, then you're able to provide some uh, additional capabilities around that. But effectively, the cons it's a consumption-based model, very you know, almost identical to the way that AWS um, manages its business. Um, so you can go on demand, which is metered by the hour, or you can buy reserved instances. You can buy that as part of your VMware ELA if you're a hybrid, if you want to do that in a hybrid way, um, or you can do that as a standalone standalone payment. Um, and finally, just a, of where we are in the, our plan is to um, eight of us keep opening up new data centers, <laughs> so we're always on the try and catch up. Um, but in in Europe now, we have Dublin, London, uh, Frankfurt, Paris. Stockholm will be open in January, so that's the next one in Europe to come. Um, and, uh, and there are plenty of data centers elsewhere in the world that people can see here on the on the slide. I think on that basis, we're we'll kind of stopping in the interest of time and just kind of see if there's any that um, that, that you want that you have. Um, not for me. I just want to say thank you very much, Tim. And um, I think these, you know, it's hopefully that's for the audience. That's been a um, a fantastic overview of. Um, not just rack spaces capabilities and the services that we can offer, but um, just as importantly, the VMware and AWS service, what it can mean for you as an existing VMware customer, but maybe not even as a VMware customer today, some of the benefits that you can have of VMware and on AWS. I think the important piece today is, um, the message I'd like to leave you with is, is how this can enable you to bridge the gap um, between your private cloud and your public cloud as you go on that journey towards um, having both and being that multi-cloud broker, and I'll, I'll mention it maybe for the tenth time today, of how you bring that organisation with you, um, not just the technology. So with that, I, I'm conscious that me and Tim can talk for a very long time. We can. Um, we've been running for 51 minutes. Um, I think these, um, we've got a couple of questions which we'll follow back up on offline, but I just want to say um, thank you all for attending the webinar today. Thank you, everybody. Um, there will be um, a recorded version of this available via the Rackspace websites um, and social media and LinkedIn, etc. Um, and we'll make sure as part of the webinar that we answer a couple of the questions that we saw come through as well, just to give you a bit more info. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Um, hope to see you back soon. Thank you. Thank you.